Hey everyone, I've received quite a few requests about recording bass guitar. How do you do it? How do you get it to sound good? That sort of thing. The good news is recording bass is a fairly straightforward operation. There's nothing very complicated about it. But good luck finding someone that can actually play one. If you want to record heavy bass, here's what you'll need. A bass guitar, a direct box, plus a software amp sim, EQ, and compressor. I'm using Freeware VSTs, and I'll show you how to use these to get a great bass tone. The other route, a Tech 21 Sans amp and a high-end analog compressor. Now you're gonna run into the occasional bass player who insists on you miking up his amp. In my experience, these are usually the guys who didn't bother to learn the songs, so as far as I'm concerned, their opinion is irrelevant, as tracking them is going to be a total fucking nightmare anyway. Yes, you can mic up a cabinet, but with bass for metal, I just don't see the point. There's so much guitar going on, I don't think there's all that much room in the soundscape for this massive wide bass tone. However, I'm sure there'll be quite a few guys who'll argue the issue, so hopefully they can cite some examples and enlighten me because I'd love to learn more about it. But for you guys at home who want to learn this, going direct on a bass is a simple solution that just plain works. First up, let me reveal to you guys the easiest way to get a great bass tone. Pay close attention, because I'm gonna show you guys something that about 98% of you have never ever seen. These are new bass strings. And for all you drummers out there, this is toilet paper. You put this on your hands before you wipe. So about these new bass strings. Now I realize most of you people out there have probably seen more live leprechauns than these, but yes, they actually exist. These are what your bass player is too cheap to buy. You never see these because your bassist always has more important things to spend his money on. Like weed. And spacers. Because apparently bass players can never have too many holes in the head. Now about basses themselves, you don't really need to spend a lot of money. I picked up this Fender Mexican Jazz on my local classifieds for about 200 bucks. When I got it, you know, the, the strings were shit, the neck was bowed, the action was terrible, and it needed a serious cleaning. So I little, put a little work into it, and it plays beautifully. I've had guys come in with some very expensive American Jazz basses and ask me to trade. Anyway, my standard procedure for the last 10 years has been bass into the Sans amp, dial in some grit, and then slam it into the distressor. And it's worked out very well. However, I understand that not everyone has a distressor kicking around, and that's why I'm going to show you how to get good results from freeware plugins, essentially doing what the Sans amp does. So plug your bass into your direct box, set your levels, and lay down your track. Take your EQ, roll off the extreme highs and lows, and scoop the mids aggressively. And then hit it hard with a compressor. Now duplicate the track you just recorded and throw on Voxango Bugex. It's free and it works fucking great for this application. Dial it in so it sounds like utter garbage or the latest Nickelback record, your choice. Just make sure the gain is cranked. Throw on an EQ and hit it aggressively with the high and low rollers. We're going for a very narrow mid-range bandwidth. Unsolo and pull the distorted fader down about five to 10 dBs lower than the main. Mute and unmute so you can hear what's going on. Add in your guitars and drums and you've got a heavy as fuck mix. And that's all there is to it. Just a word of caution, you probably want to mute out the distorted track during the rests where the heavy rhythms don't play. And here's the clip properly muted. Here's the finished track. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.